What's going on everybody, Shonen Express here, coming to you with another Return to Sender video. I'm super excited to get into this one, this is obviously a manga that I've kept up with since its beginning, there's been weekly newsletters about it, and even I think when we used to do uh, the Shonen Express podcast, me and Shania, they're, they're, we, we covered Mori King and some of those, but we're, we're going to be going over Mori King, so since... Since this wasn't a 50 chapter long series, those of you who've been watching my videos, you know that at 50 chapters, I consider you a, a successful and established manga, but this one didn't quite get 50, and so that means I'm doing a Return to Sender video on it. So we're going to look at kind of the story, we're going to get my thoughts on it, and then we're going to go into why it maybe got canceled, um, as well as where it stacks up in my current um, manga tier list. So we're going to get into all of that, but first of all, um, this this manga was written and illustrated by Tomohiro Hasegawa. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But um, it doesn't look like this manga has done anything else. I, I tried to look look them up, but I, I couldn't find any other manga. They they have a, a couple other manga, but none of them um, of huge consequence. Um, you know, just a lot of other things, probably like Mori King. So this is kind of one of their their first manga that I am experiencing. So it's cool to kind of go into it and see see our thoughts on that by the by the end of this manga. Now that it has just ended. Before we totally get into to going over this story, I do want to give a minor spoiler warning. This is Mori King is a gag manga. It's not a. Uh, you know, a very plot-heavy manga, so there's not a whole lot, it's not very intense spoilers, but there will be spoilers in this video, uh, you know, about Mori King. So, if that's something you want to avoid, definitely click off, read Mori King, and then come back and watch watch this video after you've done that. But, honestly, guys, I, I, I the very minor spoilers, if, if any real spoilers at all are in this video, but let's just get right into it. So, for those of you who've seen these videos, I break these manga down into four categories. Um, and so we'll start with the first one. The first category is art. Um, and I gotta say, I liked Mori King's art. I, I think I think that Mori King has has really good art. So first of all, those of you who've seen these videos, you know that I like clean art styles, and Mori King is definitely that. Um, all of the characters are well-defined, the settings are well-defined, it's easy to understand what is going on in each panel. And so that's something that I look for as a manga reader to be able to see in the artwork, and they definitely do that. Also, I really like the designs in this manga. I like all the fun kind of bug creatures that they come up with, as well as even the just normal human designs. Um, they're interesting, and they're, they, they serve their purpose really well, which brings me into the comedic aspect of the art. So the, this is a gag manga, so it, its goal is to make me laugh. You know, its goal is comedy, and it does that very well in several ways but but definitely prominently the art does this in a way that that helps accentuate the gags in the manga so there's times where you know characters will be like silhouetted out in white um to show their shock or like surprise at a situation which is good and i think that all together the art really helps um helps the gag aspect of this manga out really well and so all of these things together i really don't have anything negative to say about the art in mori king all these things together make me definitely say that the art in mori king is a solid pro for sure so that will lead us into the second category which is the characters and i'm going to be completely honest with you guys unlike my last Guardian of the Witch Return to Sender video, I actually don't have a lot to say about the characters in Mori King. I think that above all, these characters are simple. Whether it's Mori King and his kind of basic, you know, kind of generic hero design, or, you know, you know, Oki's got the Yakuza thing going on for him, or Shoko's just, she's always going to be excited and freaked out about the, the bug-related things that are going on around her. So all of these characters kind of tend to have, like, one trope right and so and they use that trope for the comedy again i think that these simple characters play well into the fact that it's a gag manga i don't think that there needs to be like this big character arc for anybody i think that's fine but it just you know it plays into this this gag manga and they're very simple i will say that i i liked all of the enemies i thought as each enemy came up um, that they were interesting, right? I thought Oki was interesting. I liked the the Yakuza vibe he brought. Then the the Hercules Beetle guy I thought was interesting, and and it just f going on from there, all the enemies they meet, I thought uh, both looked and acted interesting. But again, they were all one shot characters. They had one kind of appearance, and they they got beat and they left, and so they didn't have to be very nuanced. And that's okay. It's a gag manga. 
that that's fine. Um, but yeah, above all, I just I think the characters aren't deep, but I don't think they're supposed to be. But I do want to talk about one character in particular, and this is um, after reading the whole manga, this is my favorite character, and that is Shota. Um, the, the little boy who I would consider one of, if not the main character of this manga. Obviously, Mori King, being the titular character, is uh, very important to the manga, but I think that Shota is, is even more important. I think it's in him that we see where the heart of this manga is. Shota is, you know, an elementary school kid, and he's just so interested in bugs, and it's his immense love for and care for Mori King when he was just a larva, and then even when he transforms, his, his steadfastness and his sticking by his, his, his bug and declaring that he's family and this, this relationship is, not, while not like nuanced, it is definitely different than something that we've seen before. It's not the same, you know, kind of trope that we're looking for in like the oblivious character, which he sometimes plays. Shota, Shota is very kind and he's very caring and that is ultimately what allows Mori King to then face the enemies that he has to face. And I, I think that it's in him that we find the heart of the series, that that friendship and that family bond that he has with Mori King is more powerful than anything. And I, I really I really like that. Um, and so I really like Shota, and I wanted to mention him here. I thought, I thought he was by far, in my opinion, the most interesting character and the most heartwarming character. And sometimes you just need a good heartwarming manga. And so I think that Mori King did that. Um, at least occasionally, specifically through Shota. But that's that's really all I have to say about the characters. And all these things kind of put together, it leaves me with kind of like a, a bland taste in my mouth. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna not give it a pro or a con. The characters go right in the middle for me. I'm an, I'm neutral on the characters. Um, they're they're right in the middle. I I don't love them, but I I'm not sure that they're supposed to be very complicated. So I I don't want to like make it a con. So right in the middle with characters. No 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 feeling either way for that. So that will bring us to the mechanics of the world of Mori King. So when I say mechanics, what I mean by that, in case you haven't seen my other videos, is what is the power system and the setting of the world that we're in. I use both and I kind of group them together and I call it the mechanics of the show. Um, and so, what are the mechanics of Mori King? Well, first of all, the setting is just our world with some changes, and that's where the power system comes in. So, Mori King is a bug that has evolved to this, like, human level so that he can fight in the, you know, to become the Forest King, and then eventually what they call the Hoshi King, um, after that. Uh, which, so, so he's in this, this millennium-old bug war to find the king of the forest, so, to, you know, to find the bug that will rule over all these bugs. He's given these human powers, and he's able to fight other bug humans with, with these advanced powers. And so, there's not, like, a concrete power system in Mori King, but there's, you know, there is... There are fights like this and so I like the bug concept I've never seen anything like it I've never seen you know this kind of bug transformation thing I think that that's very interesting because it's new it's it's not something that I've ever seen so I did like the power system and again this is a gag manga so most of the action is used for comedy it's it's physical comedy and so I think this power system works very well for that concept and so I have no problems with that um, but towards the end, they ended up relying on, uh, especially for the power system, the mechanics, and the setting of the world, they, they ended up relying on other shows, specifically Dragon Ball Z, a lot. Um, they use powers that are pretty much Dragon Ball Z powers, just remade, and that's part of the gag, and I think it was funny, I laughed, I think I even highlighted it in one of my weekly newsletters when Mori King did, like, the Spirit Bomb-esque thing. I, you know... I, I found it interesting for sure. I, I liked it. I have no problem with it. But at the same time, they use kind of other shows' powers, specifically Dragon Ball Z, like I said, to enhance their own power system. So, you know, I at, at the end of the day, the mechanics for this world, again, I'm going to have to go right up the middle. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't love them and I didn't hate them. They were right in the middle for me. Not really a concrete power system. And, and if you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably know I'm a big fan of concrete power systems. But... There, there wasn't one here, but again, it's a gag manga. It doesn't have to have one, and I think that the action was used well for its comedic bits. So, you know, all things considered, I'm neutral on the mechanics, just like I am on the characters. And this will bring us to the plot. So the plot is the final element of the story that I that I analyze in these videos, in both my Return to Sender and my the whole package review videos. 
Um, and so let's talk about the plot of Mori King and there's not a whole lot to talk about here. The plot is essentially Mori King wants to become the king of the forest. He then fights these other bugs. Really, he actually gets the other bugs on his side and then he becomes the king of the forest. But then he has to go become the Hoshi King or the king of the world. Um, and so he has to fight other bugs and he eventually becomes the Hoshi King. That's the whole plot. And so one of the things that this plot suffers from is is a intensely fast pace. There, there is almost no time between we're told about this, the, the Forest King War, and then we see it all happen and it's over. We're told about the Hoshi King War or the Hoshi King games, and we see them happen and it's over. I feel like it, the, the pace of this manga is so fast that this plot that I actually, when it first came out, was very interested in to see if they were going to do kind of like ride the line, almost like Mashal is right now, ride the line between, you know, regular shonen and gag manga. I I was interested to see if they, if they would go that route, which is where I thought they were going to go, but it, they didn't end up doing that. They ended up speeding the pace up and just turning this into a gag manga, which again is fine. It's just, I think that there was more there that could be used um, and the escalation was crazy. I mean, we always escalated. It was like, this new bad guy, take down the bad guy. This new bad guy, take down the bad guy. And the bad guy got a little, like, better every time. I don't think it was that bad, but it was definitely very, very quick escalation. But I will say, the ending of this manga I thought was good. If you had to wrap it up in one chapter, if you had to wrap the whole thing up, while it definitely felt very fast, I didn't feel, it didn't feel undeserved. The ending of this manga made sense to me. It made sense that we got through our whole story and we were at the end of the manga. I had no problems with that. And that's something that I can't say for all of the manga that I read that get canceled in Weekly Shonen Jump. But I really did feel complete about this. Um, specifically, as I said, and I said this in my weekly newsletter um, last week, that that I really liked you know, how Shota is was using, you know, how he dealt with the end of this chapter with Mori King obviously staying in the forest, but all the other bugs becoming humans, and Shoto was the only one that remembered. I liked that ending. I thought it was a good ending, and I thought it showed this bond of friendship, but also this the world is the way that it should be, you know, kind of sense, and I, I really liked that, and so I wanted to, to highlight that here because it was something that did, that did resonate with me. I did like it, so I wanted I wanted to put that here. And of course, we get one last gag in for the road, and that was funny. But all things considered, while I did find the plot interesting, and especially in the beginning, I was very invested in it. I really wanted to see what what it was going to turn out like. I didn't. Um, I don't know. I didn't. I, I didn't love it. I, I it wasn't it was definitely not my favorite. It was it wasn't as you guys know if you watch my weekly newsletter videos, you know it wasn't highlighted very often. It was just kind of in the magazine every once in a while a gag would get me and I would highlight it, but it's um it w it wasn't super good to me. So again, and I hate to do this over and over again, but again, I'm right down the middle on the plot. I'm not gonna give it a pro or a con because I'm I'm right in the middle on the plot. So, as we do with all of our Return to Sender videos, now we need to discuss what happened to Mori King. Why did it get cancelled? Why didn't it, it go on for more chapters? Why was it cancelled chapter 35? Why is that all the runtime that, that Shonen Jump gave this manga? And I actually think that for once, this, this is maybe the best case scenario for a manga. I don't think that it was actually cancelled. I think the author ended it by themselves. Um... It, it definitely appears as if, because of the fast pace of Mori King, the author ran through their story idea very quickly. And it seems as if that was all the author had planned. I actually am of the impression that when Mori King became the, f the king of the forest, when he won that first battle, that was supposed to be the end of the manga. I don't think the mangaka actually had any more that they wanted to write about this story. I, th I think that was it. But I actually believe that Shonen Jump probably wanted more from Mori King, and that's when the whole Hoshi King tournament came in. Because it feels awfully repetitive and not quite as good as the, the first half of the story, and so I definitely I definitely think that, that the Hoshi King part was added because they were asked to continue, not because the mangaka wanted to keep going. And so when it was cancelled, I think it was just because the mangaka was finished telling the story they wanted to tell. And this... This is not, 
we shouldn't be shocked by this. This is the best case scenario. I'm super glad that it seems like a manga that, that was short, only 35 chapters long, was able to just run its course and be a short story that was told in the way that the manga wanted it to be told. I think that, that there's value in that and I really like it. And so I, I think this is a great story. I think Mori King is a great example of a, you know, kind of a right in the middle kind of manga, right down the center for me, that, that, that could end on its own terms. And I, I liked the ending. And I think one of the reasons I liked the ending is because that was what it was intended to look like. And so I really, I really like that. And so, like I said, guys, I, I think that this was literally not canceled, but just ended. The, the mangaka decided to, to hang up, you know, put the pen away, if you will. Um, on Mori King, and I hope that they come back and they give us more manga. I hope that that they work on a new project because, like I said, I really like the art style. I, I, you know, I liked the the setup to the story. I hope that they come back and work. On, I would actually want them to work on like a traditional battle shonen manga. Um, but you know, I'm a fan of battle shonen manga, so that's kind of that's, you know, that's my preference anyway. But I would love to see them come back and write another manga, and I'd love to read it sometime in the future. But yeah, I think that this is our best case scenario, guys. I think that we finally found a manga here that was returned to sender, but because the manga said they wanted to return, mangaka said they wanted it to be returned. So I definitely, I definitely think this is a great, a great sign for the magazine. So that brings us to the ranking. So these, as you can see on the screen, this is my current uh, manga ranking tier list. I've, you know, all the, the videos I've done, with it, all the review videos, so the Return to Center videos and the whole package reviews, all of that is, is all of those manga are up here and I've, I've put them on the tier list. And so we're about to do that with Mori King. So first of all, in case you haven't seen those videos, how my tier list works is S tier are things that are what I consider sublime. They're things that have affected me on a personal and real life level. As you can see, we don't have any S's yet. So we haven't, we haven't covered anything that I consider an S tier manga, something that affected me on a really deep level. A tier is something that I think is is nearly perfect. There are flaws with it, but uh, it's something that I consider nearly perfect. B tier are things that I think are great, solid manga. C tier are things that I think are good. They, you know, nothing wrong with it. They're on the good side. D tier are things that I think are bad. I, I didn't enjoy them, or I, you know, I just wasn't a fan. And then E tier are manga that I think are terrible. These are manga that I just cannot stand. I hated reading them, and so that's 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 where where E tier is. As you can see, we don't have anything in S, and we don't have anything in E, e so far. So we're still waiting on, to get some. But as you guys probably know from watching this video, I'm gonna put Mori King in C tier. I think that Mori King is good. Certainly not great. Not like the likes of of you know Bleach or Bakuman that we have up there, but. I, I definitely think that it is good. It's not bad. I enjoyed it. And as a gag manga, it's definitely good. So, Mori King will go in C tier. But guys, that's all I got to say on this Return to Sender video about Mori King. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have um, anything to say about Mori King, Weekly Shonen Jump, or anything like that, leave it down in the comment section. I'd love to talk to you about you know, stuff going on in the magazine, or Mori King. If you're really into Mori King, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this manga down in the comments section. Also, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I bring you weekly newsletter videos about Weekly Shonen Jump, the magazine, every single time that it comes out. So definitely subscribe onto the channel to get those videos, along with these other review kind of videos, these Return to Center videos um, that, that I'm putting out. I will be putting out an Our Blood Oath uh, return to center video probably pretty soon in the near future so be on the lookout for that if you if you read our blood oath or you at all um, touch that manga i'll probably be going over that manga really soon so definitely be on the lookout for that subscribe to the channel but hey thanks so much for watching this video and this is shonen express signing off